This is a very short video on how to calculate the limits of vectors. So let's say you have a vector r, which is given by three composite functions, so f of t, g of t, and h of t. If you want to take the limit of that vector r as t approaches a, then what we do is we take the limit of each composite function as t approaches a. So what we get is the limit at t approaches a of f of t for component one. We get the limit as t approaches a of g of t for component two. And we get the limit as t approaches a of h of t for component three. So I just have one example for you in this video, and that is going to be finding the limit as t approaches one of t squared minus t over t minus one i the square root of t plus aj, and then uh, sine pi t over ln t times k. So to do this, we're going to end up taking, and I'll use a different color for this, the limit as t approaches 1 of t squared minus t over t minus 1. And this will be times the vector i. So I'm going to do these all independently. So to do this one, we can't just plug one in because we get something divided by zero, but we can do some factoring. So this is t times t minus one over t minus one, which gives us t. So if we want to find the limit as t approaches one of t, which just gives us one. So I should mention that there are some i's here. So if we're being really particular about our limits, and writing all of the information in as we need it, this should just be one i. For the limit as t approaches one of the square root of t plus eight times the vector j, we can just plug this in very nicely. So this will be the square root of uh, one plus eight j, which gives us the square root of nine j, which would just be 3j. So those first, those first two components weren't too bad, but what about our third component? Limit as t approaches 1 of sine pi t over ln t times k. We're going to use L'Hopital's rule here. So we're going to take the derivative of the top and the bottom in order to do this. So what we get on the top the limit as t approaches 1. So sine pi t is going to be cosine pi times t. That's the derivative of sine t. But then we're also taking the derivative of the inside of pi t. So we're going to multiply this by pi. And then on the bottom, the derivative of ln t is going to be 1 divided by t. So now we can just plug in our values. So we're going to get pi times the cosine of pi divided by one over one, which is one. We know that cosine of pi is just equal to one. So our final thing here, and this was all multiplied by the vector k, we're going to get pi k as our limit. So to answer our question, we now have the three components. So the limit as t approaches one of this function is going to be 1i, which I'll just write as i, plus 3j, and then we're going to add pi times the vector k. If we were to write this in vector notation, it would just be 1, 3, pi. So that's the only problem I had for you here. If you're comfortable with limits in uh, calculus 1, then this is not too much of a step forward. You're just doing components. So if you have any questions, you know what to do.